Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to teach you how to test integrated circuits. So please don't miss out this video because I'm going to share with you a very exclusive and important tips and secrets. But before we dive into the course, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated for future videos like this one. And for anyone who want to join me in my Patreon page, you are very welcome. So let's get started. So as you can see here, we're gonna basically discuss this motherboard. We're gonna discuss many integrated circuits. I'm going to teach you what is exactly inputs and outputs and how to test inputs and outputs to know whether the IC is good or not. So let's begin with this motherboard as you can see over here. For example, if we take this IC as you can see over here. So this is an integrated circuit. Around it, we have many ceramic capacitor. So to know whether this IC is good or not, you can use basically three methods. In this course, I'm going to focus on the third method is by checking the inputs and outputs on the IC. But let's mention right now the first method and the second method that you can use to test the serviceability of any integrated circuits. So the first method is by checking the heat of the IC. You can just put your finger over the IC if you feel that the IC is not normal its heat is above normal means very increased means the IC is damaged the second method is by checking as you can see the ceramic capacitors around it so around any IC as you can see you can find ceramic capacitors okay so if you find that these ceramic capacitors are shorted in both sides means the IC is bad okay and the third method that we gonna discuss and study today is by checking the inputs and the, the inputs and the outputs of the IC. So let's go to the schematic. For example, let's take this IC as you can see here. So first, I'm going to teach you how to locate inputs and outputs. Okay. So of course, there is two methods by using the schematic. Okay. As you can see here, do you see these symbols? The symbol mean this is input. Okay, in this direction. Okay, and the symbol like this one, for example, in this direction from the IC to another side means this is output. This one is output. Okay, but sometimes you can find some ICs without that symbols. But I'm going to show you how to locate inputs. Why exactly we should locate inputs of the IC? Because, for example, for this IC, in order to get the output here, basically phase, always when you find phase means output. Okay, so phase is exactly like this. As you can see, V out. For this IC, we have V out, the input V out. For this IC, we have phase. And for this IC, we have LL. So this is M output, okay? So this is output V out. And also, this is output phase. So in order to get this output, the IC should receive for first the input signals. Without the input, the IC will not generate this output. So, if you didn't get this output, doesn't mean the IC is bad. No, you should first check input conditions is the, conti the condition of getting the output is by receiving the inputs. Okay, so the first input here is the VCC. Basically here, the VCC means the working voltage for the IC. 
Okay, so for this, I see as you can see, RT 8228A has as a working voltage of plus 5 volt. As you can see, this voltage will make this IC in all states. Okay, then we have the power good. The second output is the power good. As you can see, this IC should receive the power good about 3.3 volt. Then we have this signal means enable. This is basically enable signals like a command or state okay so this is also another input signals without this enable signals the ic co could not generate the output okay here for the part this is just the ground once the ic receives the signals this important signals the vcc the power go to enable signal then it will generate this signal, the upper gate, this is the control signal, and also we have the lower gate, the upper gate for the upper MOSFET, and the lower gate signal for the lower MOSFET. As you can see, this is PQ40, so Q for MOSFET. So it will generate these two control signals in order to control these two MOSFETs and to get the output the phase okay so this is how this ic works so let's see another ic so for this ic for example this is a big ic let's first detect the v out here we have the v out so in order to get this output voltage the ic first should receive what the working voltage this is the working voltage vn so the input voltage without the vn this ic could not work okay so this is the first input here as you can see this symbols means these three signals are inputs on one on two on three and also we have here on four okay so this is the lamp power the main on the sas on and the main on so this ic basically is for the network is a network controller okay so in order to get this voltage this ic should receive the v in okay as you can see we have plus v adapter because we have here plus v ad means adapter the v in is 19 volt okay then this enable signals all these four signals are enable signals. Then also we have another input signals. Why? Because we have, as you can see, this symbol. As you can see, we have ECN. Also, this is 19 volt ECA or adapter N. Okay. So we have over here, as you can see, plus 3 volt always also. The rig, this is another input signal. So here we have the ground and basically those signals are outputs. As you can see, we have drive. This is drive for, this is a control signal that controls this MOSFET. Okay, in order to generate, generate 5 volt. Okay, and also for this one, as you can see, we have driver 4. Okay, do you see here the server capacitor? The server capacitor is connected to the IC in one side and to the ground in the other side. Okay, that's why I told you when the capacitor is shorted in both sides means the IC is shorted. Because when the IC is shorted, this ground will be connected to this side of capacitor. So the capacitor will, will be connected to the ground in this side and also in this side. So once the IC receives all these inputs, it will generate the V out. So let's see this IC also, this is basically the last IC that we're gonna see in this video. Here we have LL, means this is the output, as you can see, signal. This output signals always will find the output, will pass between two MOSFETs and will pass through inductor. Do you see we have PL, means inductor, P 
PQ means MOSFET as you can see and we have PC for thermal capacitors, PR for resistor, etc. And PU as you can see for the IC. And in some motherboards you can find just Q, C, Q, R for resistor and U for IC. Okay, so let's see the inputs for the IC in order to generate as you can see this voltage this IC should receive first input so this IC basically generates as you can see the VTT DC plus 0.75 volt basically the VTT is the power for RAM terminal this is basically DTR3 because here we have plus 0.75 volt for VTT and 1.5 volt for VDT okay so here as you can see we have the VTT reference so this is an output signal here we have compensation here we have NC means not connected S3 S5 this is basically input signals do you see the symbol over here this is input signals